Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop video today. Take it to go out today, see if things came out, see if things are on sale today. Today though, there's actually quite a few uh, big releases that would come out. Uh, the One of the big ones that comes out is the Disney Pixar movie Onward. And with that one, that has a number of different retail exclusive editions of that one. I know Target has a, I believe it's a 4K edition, which includes a filmmaker gallery book with that one. And then um, Best Buy has an exclusive uh, 4K steelbook edition of that one. Also though, the, the Sonic movie, that releases today. And with that one, there's an, I believe Best Buy has an exclusive Steelbook release of that one. I don't think they have an exclusive of that at Target. And I don't believe Walmart has anything exclusive as far as I know with that. Also though, the uh, Boy 2, uh, that releases today, as well as the Ben Affleck movie, The Way Back. And he stars in that one comes out today, as well as a uh, Justice League Dark, the, um, Apocalypse War, and that one I know there's some exclusives as well. I believe um, Best Buy has one that includes a figure with it, and then Target has an exclusive uh, steelbook of that one. Also, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received a review and talk about for you guys. Uh, so, like that, uh, as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed, if you guys have seen them, what you guys thought of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. I have my um, one different mask today. I have like two different ones that are kind of like this one. I also have the um, the one white mask that I wear a lot as well. That one sometimes gets, if you have that on too long though, it gets like really hard to breathe in that one. This one though like fogs up the, um, the uh, you know, sunglasses really bad. So, see it's like fogging up. I also want to say guys, uh, thanks so much for the you guys who have um, joined my channel as well. I've talked about that some on the live show. And if you guys haven't seen it yet too, anyone who, like if you guys see like in the post below and in the live show and that kind of stuff, if you see like um, little like badges next to people's name, like they have the, the uh, one of the badges is the cool dude or hat. That's what that is. So you, you, they have like badges for people who join the channel. And like the longer you're on, the badges like update and everything to like one eventually be like a blu-ray case with my face on it so it's like a whole bunch of different ones so yeah check out that below if you guys haven't seen it but gonna head into uh walmart now but in here though like i was saying though the big thing that came out today was sonic the hedgehog which i really like this one a lot and this one here is a 27.96 for the 4k edition of that one a 22.96 for the dvd blu-ray combo and then 17.96 for just the dvd of that one also though right here uh, they don't have any of them out. It's really weird. All of them are empty here. The movie Onward, the Disney Pixar movie. And I got to watch a digital code of that one uh, last night. And if you guys are wondering about that movie, would definitely recommend you guys check it out. I got a code of it from Disney to check it out. But I really, really like that movie. But it was basically though, set in a world of like magic where there's elves and fairies and all that kind of stuff. And it's about these two brothers. And the one brother um, the ones never got to meet his father because he passed away when he was very young and his older brother did but basically the kid in the beginning of the movie turns 16 and he ends up getting a um thing from his father that he got like it was a gift for him when he was when he, when he was 16 and basically though it was like a spell to bring his father back for one day but what ends up happening though is the spell gets messed up and the crystal that they needed for the spell got destroyed so him and his brother both have to go on a journey to you know get another crystal to bring his father back all the way because all they brought back was his lower half and like his legs and that was it but would re definitely recommend you guys check that out really like that one but like i said it's a shame i don't have it to show you here when i'm talking about it other than that over here uh the one here uh movie downhill it looks like they only have the dvd of that one the movie with will ferrell and julia louis dreyfus and this one's a, a remake of the movie force major i believe is the title but really like this movie a lot too it was it, it's not like the greatest but I actually liked it, and it was like a different kind of role for Will Ferrell. <coughs> also, though, uh, this one here, The Way Back, uh, that released the Ben Affleck movie, and that one's 1996 for the Blu ray, uh, 1796 for the DVD. And in here, though, they have like a, a, a four movie collection. It's like it's done like in the old style of these kind of collections here, old DVD kind of styles. But it has The Way Back, The Blind Side, um, you know, Million Dollar Baby, and I think it's first. Any, oh, any given Sunday, and that's on $24.96. And they do have the Tom Cruise movies here on 4K. They have uh, Days of Thunder, and that one's on $19.96 for that one. And then $19.96 for Top Gun on 4K. And then they have just it on DVD for $9.96. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to talk in these masks a little bit. But hey, it kind of like muffles things a little bit. But they have 
uh, Justice League Dark, um, Apocalypse War. And like I said, if you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. But this is $24.96 for the 4K, uh, $17.96 for the uh, DVD, and then $14.96 for the, I mean, $17.96 for the Blu-ray, $14.96 for the DVD. This one here, Poke, I don't know how to say this one. Uh, this one released today, though, and that's $18.96. Also, though, the uh, postcard killings, that came out today. I'll be talking about this one at the end of this video, and that one is uh, $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the DVD. Also, though, The Boy 2 came out. Over here, though, one of the other things that came out today was the movie uh, Zombies 2 here. And I saw the first film in this series. I thought it was okay. It's basically like a, um, like a, a kind of like a horror, uh, you know, mu you know, musical, but for kids. It, it has, like, singing scenes. It's like a school, and all the kids are zombies and everything, and there's some kids that aren't. It was kind of, kind of an interesting kind of thing here. Uh, and like I said, I have not seen the second one. It's always so hard to put these things back. Like, look at how it's, like, impossible to get them back in there. Other than that, though, over here, though, I know there's a couple other things that came out today. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. There are some empty spots up here. I don't know what these ones were. But this one here, uh, Behind You, uh, this release today. I think I'm going to pick this one up. This one looked kind of interesting. And this one is uh, $12.96 for this one. Also, this uh, David Arquette film here called 2099, The Soldier Protocol. I believe this one released today. I don't know anything about this one. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this one was. Also, this one here called One Church. I believe that was today as well. You always have to make sure it really check well because the one week I was in here, they had something out early. They had Fantasy Island and I totally missed getting it. So you always have to check to make sure they don't put anything else early in here. This is another one that came out today, this uh, Samora Weaving movie. And so I'm going to definitely get this one as well here called Last Moment of Clarity. And this looked kind of interesting. This one, though, there is no Blu-ray of this one. It's only available on... Uh, DVD and also Fear of the Walking Dead, the complete fifth season, which I didn't get to see any of this season at all. Uh, the last season was pretty interesting though of this one, but this is $24.99 for the Blu ray of that and then $19.96 for the DVD of it. Also, though, this Felicia Rose movie comes out today called A Nun's Curse, which is one I definitely look forward to seeing. I should be getting a copy of this one to review soon, but this is one I really look forward to checking out. And they also have uh, this other one here that's movie starring Zach Galligan. I think I'm going to get this one here as well, called Evil Little Things. And I think it's kind of like a horror anthology from what I ha was reading about this one. And other than that, though, uh, Scarecrow's Revenge. Uh, this releases today as well. And I'm going to have a review of this at the end of uh, this video here. And I believe, too, uh, The Loud House, Absolute Madness, Season 2, Volume 2. I believe that one uh, came out today as well. But just checking over here just to make sure there's nothing else different and I don't miss over anything. But yeah, I don't, I don't see Onward anywhere in that section. So I don't know if they didn't get in the Onwards yet or maybe they just didn't get put out. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, it seems to me like there's absolutely none of them in here though, at least as far as I can tell. Let me check just over here, just in case. Yeah, it definitely doesn't look like they're out in here anywhere. And over here, I thought I would just check over in the toy section, and they actually have the things that I wanted to find because I showed these last time I did a video looking for these uh, Ghostbusters retro figures, and I, I found the figures, except for the only one I didn't find was the Peter Venkman one, but I didn't see these two ones because these ones released really separately, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and the Slimer figure, and they actually have these ones in here. I think the one I want to get, though, is the Slimer. This is the one that I really wanted to find. It's $14.92 for this one. So I'm definitely getting a bunch of stuff in here today, but this is one of those ones, like I said, I, I, the only other one that I bought was the Egon. So I want to put this one up on the wall next to the Egon one. But to me, that it's so cool to see these reissues like this. I do really like the Stay Puft one as well, but always really love Slimer. So this is definitely one I wanted to get. I don't see, though, any of the Proton Pack. I think they had like a, like a trap in a Proton Pack, or maybe just a trap I saw some pictures of online, but... I don't see any of those ones here, but definitely glad to find this one though. Yeah, but in here though, I got really lucky. I totally was not expecting to find this because they didn't have any more of the figures. And I figured this was gonna be one of those ones that was like impossible to find. So, so glad to see this in here though. What? 
Yeah, but in there, like I was saying, I was really glad with the stuff that I found. But what I ended up picking up in there was this one, uh, Evil Little Things. Like I said, it sounded like a, like a like a anthology film from what I could tell, but it definitely sounded interesting. And oh, you know, always love Zach Galligan, you know, who was from the Gremlins films and a whole bunch of different stuff. And then this um, Samara Weaving movie, uh, Last Moment of Clarity. I picked this one up as well. And like I said, this one sounded interesting. And like I said, there was no Blu-ray release of this one. And then the other one uh, that I picked up was this one called Behind You, which I, like I said, I read about this one. And sound like a pretty interesting one as well and I'm, I'm sorry too like I was saying that they didn't have Onward out in there so I could show it you know when I was talking about it in there but like I said I really like that movie Onward I would definitely recommend you guys check that out if, out if you guys are wondering about that one I will eventually though pick that one up uh, because that's one of those ones too that I, maybe like when there's sales and stuff like that it will be even cheaper but I definitely would recommend though you know, checking that one out. I, I believe too, it's on Disney Plus as well. Uh, and the other one, like I said, that I picked up in there was the uh, Ghostbusters figure. The they call it Green Ghost. I think that was what it was probably. Slimer was actually called, I guess, in the beginning before he had his name. And I don't know why they call it Green Ghost, not Slimer. I don't even remember why. But that's very strange. But it's, it's definitely a Slimer figure. But like I said, really was definitely glad uh, to find this one in here because this is one of those ones I figured this is going to be really difficult to find. And like I said, they didn't have any more of the other ones in there at all. But now, though, let's head home quickly to the computer to check out uh, Target's weekly ad to see their, uh, you know, sales this week for DVDs and Blu-rays. So taking a look here, though, on Target's weekly ad, I was I was looking through on the you know the full list, and on the full list, it doesn't show a detailed look though at the Onward, because uh, the Target has an exclusive Onward uh, 4K for 34.99, which has a um, filmmaker and uh, storybook in that one, uh, but it didn't show it when I did the full list here, because you can see uh, full list here when you click here, and then you click um, movies, so you can see all the ones, but it did that didn't show Onward on this list though. But taking a look at the uh, new releases here. Uh, Sonic on um, the Sonic movie on Blu-ray. That one's $22.99. It's uh, $17.99 for the DVD. Uh, this one that came out today, Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. They have an exclusive only at Target Steelbook edition of that one, and that one's on $19.99. And then this is also an exclusive at Target. The Hunger Games Collection Steelbook, which is a Blu-ray Steelbook. It's all the movies together for $49.99. And then uh, the Blu-ray of the Justice League movie, that one's uh, the new Justice League film, is $17.99. Uh, Sonic is uh, on 4K, is $27.99. And then the new Ben Affleck movie, The Way Back, that one's $19.99 for the Blu-ray. Uh, the 4K of the Justice League movie is uh, $24.99. And then the Way Back uh, you know, DVD, that one is uh, $17.99 for that one. And now let's head back to the computer as well to check out uh, BestBuy.com to see what their uh, weekly sales are this week. And taking a look here, though, on Best Buy's weekly ad, uh, the big thing that came out today is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, and they have an exclusive uh, 4K steelbook of this one. You know, it's only a Best Buy only exclusive steelbook. That's actually a really cool steelbook, and it has you know Jim Carrey in the back. You know, he plays Doctor Robotnik in the film. This one is a uh, 32.99 for that one. I actually really like this movie. Uh, the other one that they have that's uh, exclusive as well is they have the Blues Brothers movie on 4K, uh, and this one you know you can get the 4K one anywhere, but they they have the exclusive of a steelbook edition of that one and that one is on $19.99 for the exclusive 4k steelbook other than that though uh, they have an exclusive as well for Justice League Dark Apocalypse War this is the one that comes with a figure and this one is uh, $29.99 for that one that's actually a very cool exclusive one like I was saying if you guys have seen this one let me know how this one was and then other than that here I think they have War of the Worlds on 4K for $19.99, uh, Top Gun on 4K for $19.99, uh, this one here, Promare Steelbook for $24.99, uh, Days of Thunder on 4K for $19.99, uh, the Mandy Steelbook uh, is uh, $22.99. Uh, postcard Killings on DVD, that one is a $13.99. Some of these ones, though, I don't think will be available in stores. But if you want the standard edition, though, of Blues Brothers, uh, that one is um, $19.99 for that one, for the standard edition 4K. Now, this one, though, had a date change. I think this comes out the first um, uh, Tuesday in June, I believe. I don't believe this one. I, I'm pretty sure, though, this the Creep Show Season 1 uh, that had, had a, a brand new you know, a date change on that one. But that's one I'm definitely looking forward to. But I, like I said, I believe that comes out the first Tuesday in June. And then some of the other ones that were today was Flashdance. Like I said, I'm not sure if all these ones will be available for store pickup because sometimes they don't have them, you know, in actual, in stores. Let me see if it shows. You know, because sometimes, you know, they're only available, yes, yeah, only available for shipping. So this one won't be sold in stores. So I think this is the main ones 
um, that will be in stores. Let's see this one behind you, if this one is in stores or not. Yeah, this one says for shipping only. What about um, the postcard killings? That was the other one. I also don't see the boy, too, that, because that came out today, and I don't see the boy uh, listed on here, unless it's further down the list. Let's see, what about this one, Last Moment of Clarity? Uh, that one's only available for shipping. So that's the one thing. There's a lot of different ones that are only available for uh, shipping. And that's probably the same situation here with um, Downhill. But it's weird that the boy isn't, um, like I said, the boy isn't listed on their list. But yeah, so you always have to kind of check because sometimes they're available in stores. Other times they're only for pickup. But these are the, oh yeah, and they also do have a uh, exclusive steelbook though here for Onward. A, um, you know, a 4K steelbook of Onward here. And that one is a $34.99 for that one. And so that's a really cool one as well. Into the rallies drive through And this is um, on the East Coast. This place is called Checkers. But out here it's called Rallies. I don't know why it has a totally different name out here. But I haven't been. I don't think I've ever actually been to this. Uh, I've been to Checkers when I was, you know, lived in Maryland. But my brother wanted me to get this to try today. So, yeah, so we'll try uh, Rallies over here too I've never seen this kind of system they have two different lines but this one here is only for pickup for it's like DoorDash and like Postmates and Uber Eats it's really interesting because I went through that one by mistake the first time because I was like why is everybody in this line it's like it's like real long, busy but then this one that's why it was only for pickup hi can I help hi so I need to get one of the uh, double cheeseburger and on that is only the meat and cheese please Okay. And then um, one a large order of fries. And then a uh, four count of the uh, mozzarella sticks, please. Anything else? And then just a funnel cake fries. And that was everything. Here it's about 1030. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now into the Popeyes drive through we go, but as you can see, this one has a really big line. I, I, I can say more people are going out now. Because when I was here last Tuesday, pretty much this exact same time, I think I went right in. There was like literally no cars at all. It was just me. But look at the cars now. It's all the way back into here. It was all the way around. And at that rally's drive through that was a really weird system because like I went through the drive through and I guess something wasn't ready yet or something and they're like, can you go around to the other side? You know, I was showing how they had the one which was like Postmates pickup, but the, the side, the pickup thing is like the window was on this side. So like she was handing me this stuff and I had to like reach in a weird way and I'm like, well, people don't really bend this way. It was like I had to try and reach all the way up to grab the thing and the, th and the window's up real high. So it was kind of like, ooh, slightly like crinked my back up doing it. I'm like, oh, I, I mean, I need to have like, um, I don't even know after having that, but man, it was a very weird system. I've never seen it. I've seen, like I said, two lines, but never one where you have to go and grab it in that kind of a way. It was like, oof, finally getting there. Hi, what can I get for you today? Hi, so I need to get two of the um, chicken sandwiches, please, but both of those ones are mild and uh, no mayonnaise on both of them. And then um, just two of the uh, mild uh, chicken breasts, please. And uh, that was everything. And no mayo, correct? That's right, yeah. So no mayo on both of the, the uh, chicken sandwiches. And then for the um, chicken breasts, did you want those mild or spicy? Um, yeah, both of those ones are mild as well, please. Will that be all for you today? And that was everything. You told us two classes with chicken sandwiches, no mayo, and two mild breasts. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, thank you. And this is one of those ones where you have to put on the mask. So I have, you know, because uh, not all the drive throughs have you do it, but this is one of the ones they have like a sign on there that says you have to put it on. How can I help you today? Hi, so I need to get just two of the um, medium sides of the fried rice, please. Of course, anything else for you? And have? then um, one uh, order of the super greens, just the uh, regular size side of that. Medium as well, okay. Yes, please. And uh, the uh, veggie spring rolls. How many orders? Uh, just one, please. Okay. And so then you got uh, sauce on the side. Yeah, and just uh, three sides of sweet and sour, please, and okay. some soy sauce, please. You got it. Anything else? And that was everything. Would you like to make a donation to fight COVID nineteen? Yeah, you can uh, round up to fourteen. All right. Thank you so much. If everything is correct, it's going to be a good cool moment. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I think they said ma'am again. I couldn't tell, but I think so.
So anyway though guys, that was all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments below what you guys picked up on DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K if you guys ended up picking up anything today. As well, let me know too anything new that you guys have been watching on TV, any new TV shows, or any new movies that you guys have watched recently, or anything on demand, or any of that kind of stuff. Also, a lot of people are asking me too about like slip covers. If I've noticed that slip covers, I wanted to make sure to mention this, you know, slip covers not being on releases and stuff like that. And I have been noticing that, that there's a lot of like some of the Disney ones that haven't had them. I don't know if like uh, Downhill, if that one's going to have a slipcover. They didn't have a slip. I don't think the, the DVDs usually have slipcovers, but they're, I believe it's on Blu-ray as well, that film. And I don't know if that one's going to have it. If you guys saw that in stores anywhere, let me know if that one had a slipcover. I know like Call of the Wild, uh, that one didn't. Uh, I believe Onward, from what I've seen pictures of, like I said, I didn't see it in person, but when I've seen pictures, people who are getting the Blu-ray, it looks like it did didn't have a slip cover as well. So so it's an interesting thing with some things not having the slip covers lately because a lot of people were asking me about that. But like I was saying though, let me know anything you guys picked up today. Also let me know what you guys thought of all the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I reviewed at the end of this video. If you guys have seen them, what you guys thought. Also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. Uh, and also too, thanks again for those of you guys who have been joining my channel. If you guys are interested in finding out more about that, you can check out below all the videos. It has a thing that says join. Anyway though guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. Now before we get to the brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews, I want to let you guys know about one movie that I got to check out on uh, streaming, which is the brand new uh, Scooby-Doo animated film, the computer animated film here called Scoob. I got a digital code for this one to check this out from uh, Warner Brothers. I was really glad to get to see this one. And what's really fun about this Scooby-Doo movie is it brings back, you know, classic characters, you know, classic Hanna-Barbera characters, which I have not seen in years. Like it has uh, Dick Dastardly, who is from the uh, show Wacky Racers, which I used to watch that one as a really little kid I used to watch reruns like really really early in the morning I remember watching that and really like that also like uh, Captain Caveman is in this one but this is essentially though about you know how Scooby and uh, Shaggy first met and their friendship and then it cuts to them now you know with the mystery gang and and you know the the the, uh, the mystery gang though is voiced by like in this one it's Shaggy's voiced by Will Forte and then you know um, Gina Rodriguez is voicing Velma Zac Efron is Fred Amanda Seyfried is uh, Daphne but it's basically though about you you know, Dirk Dastley's character is trying to go around to collect these skulls because if he gets all the skulls, he's able to open up this portal to like another dimension. Uh, and it's basically though, um, you know, he needs Scooby though, because like Scooby's the one who would like actually be able to open up the portal. So he's kind of coming after Scooby and they're trying to, you know, he's trying to get him. It's kind of, you know, Scooby and Shaggy, Shaggy along with, you know, um, the uh, character of Blue Falcon, who's voiced by Mark Wahlberg, you know, trying to like save the day and everything. But like I said, it's a really, really fun movie, has really great animation on this one, but definitely would recommend you guys check this out. And also, if you guys have watched it though, let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys uh, thought of this one. Now, before we get to the reviews, I have a couple things I want to show you guys to let you guys know are available. Now these first four movies here are all from director uh, Dark Infinity and these are all films which I um, appear in as well and act in as well. And I'll have a link below where you guys can go to order these ones if you guys were interested in ordering uh, DVD copies of these ones. And you guys can only get them from the link below. So like I said I'll have a link below where you guys can go to order these ones. And this one here is a movie called 5G Zombies. And this is basically though about like the 5G symbol like you know phone uh, signals basically driving people crazy and like turning them like into zombies and in this in the movie it's like a bunch of people having like going crazy from the signals and everything and I'm in here totally cracking up and going totally nuts because of the you know the signals going on and like I said it's like a zombie film it's a really fun uh, film like I said this one here is called 5G Zombies this is the unrated edition of the film it has a teaser teaser trailer and the DVD trailer on here uh, feature wise and I'll show you guys a look inside too here's an alternate artwork in here as well cover up the one thing just so no, no one says anything. Uh, the other movie here is a movie uh, called The uh, Last Roommate and this is the unrated special edition of the film and this one is kind of like a um, uh, you know like a single white female kind of movie about like a woman who's looking for a roommate and like uh, in the movie though she like looks online where people can kind of almost like audition to be like you know your roommate and she's like you know people are like um, 
saying why they should be a room, your, their, your roommate and kind of like um, there are things that they don't like and all these kind of things like, oh, don't do this and don't do that. Don't have this kind of food in the house. And my characters in here, uh, you know, is one of the people who is like auditioning to be the roommate. And I have all kinds of demands and all kinds of problems and everything on this one. And on here, though, this has the unrated version, the uh, promotional trailer, extended scene and behind the scenes photos. But this one's basically, though, uh, about a, the woman who ends up becoming the roommate is becomes like obsessive and stalkerous and basically is like obsessed with the woman and uh, going crazy but it's a really cool movie like I said if you guys like stuff like single white female it's in that vein uh, this one here I'll cover up right here just as a little gross so no one says anything this is a movie here called Axe to Pieces and this is a um, throwback 80s style slasher film it's all aged to look like it's shot on VHS so it's a total like throwback you know um kind of like Edge of the Axe and those kind of films. It's it's in that kind of style, like The Mutilator. And it's actually a really fun movie about a, a killer that's going around killing people and the people who are investigating it. And, and my character is one of the people who's investigating. Like the one character is calling me up and asking about the killer and what I've heard and all that kind of stuff going on. But like I said, it's a total throwback. Has really cool uh, synth music as well on this one. Uh, and then the other one here is uh, Tales from the Campfire 3. And this is basically like a, you know, this is an anthology horror film. And it's kind of like, you know, um, almost like, you know, something like Afraid of the Dark, you know, the, the how the stories are told. It's about a group of people who are around at a campfire telling the stories, telling, you know, the horror stories and everything. And uh, my character is part of the group of the campfire you know, people who are telling the stories. So I, it's, I'm, th I'm throughout the movie in the wraparound segment of this film. It's a bunch of different, uh, you know, uh, you know horror uh, uh, segments in here. It's also filmed in a lot of cool, like, famous locations, like locations from Child's Play 2, Halloween 3, uh, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Tales from the Crip, Demon Knight. But on this one, though, this has the introduction by the director, Dark Infinity, uh, theatrical trailer, uh, you know, I mean, original trailer in here, behind the scenes photos, and a making of. So it has the making of footage from when I was shooting the, um, you know, the campfire segment on this one. And like I said, I'll have a link below where you guys can go to order these ones. Now, this one here, I wanted to show you guys as well. Uh, the uh, High Def Ninja sent this over to let you guys know this was available. And this is the uh, Steelbook edition here of Mandy. This is like a great film uh, starring Nicolas Cage. This is from the same director who did Beyond the Black Rainbow. If you guys have never seen Beyond the Black Rainbow, that's an absolute must-watch film as well. And this is basically, though, about, like, um... It's a revenge film about what happens to Nicholas Cage's character's wife, and it's him kind of tracking down the people that were responsible for what happens to her, and it's like this insane kind of cult, and it's 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 really really freaky movie. It's like an, an absolutely intense, definitely one of my top favorite Nicholas Cage movies, especially for him. If you guys like Nicholas Cage, like you know when he goes totally crazy, uh, this is a great one of him going like totally nuts. And in here though, it has this is cool. It has these um. He's like, are these stickers or tattoos? What are these here? They, oh, yeah, tattoos. So, you know, the Cheddar Goblin uh, tattoos, those are actually really cool. But here's a look inside here at this steelbook. And it has the Blu-ray copy of the movie as well as a DVD copy of the film here as well. I'll show you guys, though. A look inside here at this one. Here's a look here at the back. But like I said, though, I want to let you guys know that this one was available. And thanks so much for High Def Ninja for sending over uh, this steelbook here to show you guys. And the first one I got here is from Shout Factory. And this is a show as I never saw this one when this was airing. I believe the show just finished, you know, had its finale a couple of months back. And this is the complete series here of The Good Place on Blu ray. And this show has never been available on Blu ray before. I believe the other seasons were available on DVD. And I'm pretty sure Shout Factory, as well as also releasing, though, the newest season on, on DVD on its own, though, if you guys wanted to just get uh, the newest season of the show. But it's really cool to have the whole series here on Blu ray. And like I said, I cannot believe I didn't see this one when this was on. It's actually a really, really fun show. On here, though, it has a bunch of different features. It has extended episodes, uh, audio commentary tracks, a finale hosted by Seth Meyers, the 2019 San Diego Comic-Con panel, gag reels, uh, visual effects test, a uh, table read. But basically, though, this show is about, you know, um, Kristen Bell's character. She finds out in the beginning of the show that she had died, and you find out exactly how she died and everything. And basically, though, when you die, you either go to the good place or the bad place. 
And essentially, though, the good place is like really selective. Very few people can go to this. Even like big celebrities and people you would expect to go to the good place or not, do not get accepted into the good place. They go to the bad place. And uh, basically, though, Christian Bell's character gets to the good place and ends up meeting Ted Danson's character. And he, his character is kind of like, uh, like the person there who, at least there's a number of different areas of good places, like the good place, but the area, or at least the town of the good place where Christian Bell's character ends up is, is pretty much run. Uh, by Ted Danson's character. He's kind of the person you meet when you get there. He kind of keeps things in order, makes sure things are run correctly, and kind of in charge of things there. But basically, though, um, Ted Danson's saying, welcome to the good place, and he's like showing her her new house and everything where she's going to live. And and basically, though, uh, he, she, Kristen Bell starts to find, find out and figure out that uh, Ted Danson's character is very confused and thinks that she's somebody else because she, he's saying like, oh, uh, well, you remember you did this and you were you did all these good things for the community and you helped all these people and you did all this stuff and she's thinking mm -hmm, yeah yeah huh and it you know and right after he leaves she's like oh that wasn't me there's a big confusion and she also meets her soulmate right when she gets there as well and you know he's one of those kind of guys though that's real about like uh, you know a stickler to the rules and he's like never done never told a lie and he's all that kind of stuff and he finds out about this that she's not who she says you know who Ted Danson's character thinks she is and she doesn't belong there and you know she's like please don't say anything and he's like oh I I I know I don't lie. I don't know what to do. And it's he's kind of put in this real bad situation of not knowing what to do. And Christian Bell's character is trying to figure out exactly how she's going to kind of be under the radar so Ted Danson's character doesn't find out. So it's kind of like all these kind of problems that are going on and everything, but it's a really, really fun show. Uh, looks great here on Blu-ray, though. Absolutely looks great. Uh, uh, picture quality and everything on this one. So I would definitely recommend if you guys are a fan of this show. A really great collection here. I'll show you guys a quick look inside of here as well. It's, like I said, it's a complete first season here, and this is a... Um, you know, a, um, how many discs set is this one here? One, uh, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's a nine, uh, disc set here. And this has all 53 episodes of the show. It also has a bonus disc of features as well on this one. But like I said, really, really fun show. One of you guys know this one's available from Shot Factory, the complete series here of The Good Place. And the next one I got here is from Universal. This is the 4K Ultra HD edition here of The Invisible Man. This has the 4K, the Blu-ray, and the digital code. This is one that I really like this a lot. This is directed by Lee Wenhell, who also directed the film uh, Upgrade. And he was like behind Saul, like was one of the writers of Saul and a whole bunch of different things that he was behind like in, uh, I think he directed like uh, one of the like the most recent Insidious film I believe but a whole bunch of movies but Upgrade though is one that he did as well which I would say is an absolute must watch if you guys have never seen Upgrade uh, this one though is basically though about Elizabeth Moss's character and she's in this horrible abusive relationship with this guy and she's trying to get away from him and he's horrible and she's trying to figure out how she's going to get away and in the beginning of the movie though she ends up sneaking out of the house and gets away and he like chases after her and you know um, basically you know she she finds out though I think it was like the very next day she finds out that he had died you know he ended up killing himself and basically though she's kind of thinking well he would be doing this why would he this it doesn't seem like something that he would do and but she finds out though that she inherited all this money uh, you know from him but there was all these stipulations though that she would only get the money if she was not you know kind of proven to be crazy or she doesn't do anything erratic or anything kind of crazy but right when, you know, after he, her, you know, her boyfriend dies, uh, basically, though, weird sort of things start to happen. She starts, like, hearing weird things in her house. She's seeing, like, footsteps, like, in the ground, like, these weird footsteps. She's seeing, like, handprints and all sorts of weird things are going on. And she's thinking, like, you know, is my boyfriend, like, invisible? And it's kind of like, it, did she crack up here? Is she going crazy herself? Or is some, somehow, is her boyfriend back as a ghost? Or what exactly is going on? How exactly... Is this happening? Is she, you know, her boyfriend, you know, is said to have been dead at the very beginning of this movie, but yet somehow she's getting tormented by what she believes to be or who she believes to be her boyfriend. But this one, like I said, is absolutely a must watch on 4K wise, though. This one looks great on 4K. The big thing with 4K, which I always talk about, is the high dynamic, high dynamic range, which is the contrast levels, which means it has much, much darker levels of the contrast, the levels of like the dark level and everything. And, the, and also, it's a much brighter picture.
picture all around. That's the one thing I've said a lot too. I always feel like 4K is just a much more vibrant, brighter picture. On here though, this has a whole bunch of different features. It has deleted scenes. It has a director's uh, journey on here. It has a bunch of different um, featurettes on here. It has a commentary track on here with the director. But like I said, really, really great movie here. Now, the next one here is from Universal as well. And this is uh, Brahms, The Boy 2. I actually really like the first Boy movie. And I don't want to... This is one of those things where to talk about this movie, I, I won't do any spoilers for the first movie. I will say though, the first movie though has like a, a vibe. It's kind of like the 70s TV movie that I always really liked. Uh, that's all I'll say with it. But basically though... Um, I don't want to spoil anything, though, about uh, the plot of the first one. If you, from the trailers, though, if you've seen the trailer, you know it's about a woman in the first one who ends up becoming a nanny uh, at this house. And um, basically, though, that she's a nanny, but for this doll. Because, like, the old couple that live there is, like, has this doll and says, does all these rules. Like, you have to, you know, don't not, you have to feed Brahms. And you have all these things you have to do. Like, don't cover the doll's face and all these certain kind of things. And that's what happens in the first movie. Now, this one, the doll from the first movie now, was found out back of where the kind of the mansion was because it's basically about a new family that ends up moving to the grounds of where Brahms' doll was and because basically the movie took place the first movie in this huge mansion but by the mansion was this kind of like small kind of farmhouse nearby and a family that moves in there found the Brahms doll from the first film and basically the one kid found the doll uh, kind of buried outside with like its hand out of the ground and like the mulch and stuff like that in the dirt and basically though the second this kid finds this doll the kid starts kind of acting strange and he's kind of talking to the doll and kind of it's like you know like um that whole kind of thing and it's basically like uh what exactly is going on here because like if you saw the first movie like i said i really don't want to spoil anything here so all i can say is though once that they find this doll weird sort of things start to happen and kitty holmes character who plays the mother is kind of trying to figure out exactly the history of this doll and the history of the whole thing exactly what's going on and the groundskeeper who who like lives on the ground he's acting really strange if she asks about the doll and all these sort of things but I actually like this movie it wasn't as good as the first film but I still did like this one a lot now what's interesting though about this is I saw that on iTunes uh, the digital code for iTunes because the di digital code is only an iTunes code but from what I heard the uh, and if any of you guys look at it let me know what's the difference with the cut from what I heard um, I believe it has a director's cut which is an iTunes exclusive uh, so like I said if you guys look at that let me know what What's different with that edit? Because I'm really curious about what's different about that one. But on the actual Blu-ray feature-wise, it has an alternate ending and deleted and extended scenes. So I'm not sure if like the director's cut kind of incorporates like any of the deleted and extended scenes into the movie. That's what I'm not sure about the, the, or not. But let me know. Like I said, if you guys have iTunes and you look at that, let me know. Uh, the next one here is from RLJ uh, Entertainment. This is a movie here which stars Jeffrey Dean Morgan uh, and, uh, called um, The Postcard Killings. And this was actually a really interesting movie. This was basically, though, um, the beginning of the movie, it's... Um Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character, who's a cop in New York, uh, New York, the New York detective, and he finds out though that it was his or that his um, daughter was uh, and her daughter and you know his daughter and. Um, the daughter's boyfriend were going on there. They were just getting married. I actually think they just got married, or getting married, and they ended up getting killed. And um, you know, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's characters found out about this, and he's kind of traveled to Europe to try and like kind of figure out exactly what had happened and he kind of becomes you know obsessed with figuring out exactly who was involved in this and who was it that you know killed his daughter because it's that the deaths too are these horrific deaths and the dot and the bodies are like posed in these certain kinds of ways and there's like all sorts of really heinous stuff going on and he basically though is trying to figure out exactly what's going on because the cops the cops like won't tell him anything he's trying to ask certain questions and the and he, you know because he he's a cop as well, he kind of feels like he could get some more information from them because like, well, I'm a cop as well. And they're like, well, you don't have any jurisdiction here. And you're, you're a cop in, you know, New York, you know, this is Europe, you know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. And, and he starts to find out though, that the people, and this is very early on in the movie, that people who are, um, you know, going to get killed or there's basically, uh, the people are kind of, you know, it's kind of known who's going to get killed because postcards are sent to random people. And it kind of puts people's names and pictures of 
of them. And but Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character is trying to get to the bottom of this and find the person. It's one of those real like twisty kind of movies where things are all over the place of you know thinking you maybe you have an idea of who is involved in this and who could be the person. And it's it's that whole kind of thing. But like I said, this is actually a really really interesting movie here. Really like this one a lot. And this one has on here though the making of postcards killing uh, you know making of postcard killings uh, featurette on this one. The next one here is from RLJ uh, Entertainment as well. And this is a RLJ Films as well. And this is a really cool steelbook release of this one. And this one is only available on a DVD version and then a, uh, a Blu-ray steelbook, which has the Blu-ray and a DVD. But this is a really cool steelbook. And this is a movie here called uh, Tigers Are Not Afraid. This is also a Shutter exclusive film. And I'll show you guys, though, a look at this one. But this is, a, like I said, a really cool, well-designed uh, steelbook release here. I'll show you guys a look inside here at this one. But this is definitely a very cool uh, steelbook. RLJ you know, uh, Films is also doing a steelbook for um, uh, Mandy and they're also um, doing one uh, coming up. I can't remember what the name of the one was but there's another one coming out from them I think uh, next month as well uh, it's going to be a steelbook. But I really like these steelbook releases that they're doing for their films. This movie though is a really, really well made movie. Uh, it's basically though, it's kind of hard to explain. It, it's, it says on here though, it's an I, you know, a, a blend of fantasy and brut br brutality and innocence and evil. But it's, you know, Gamal del Toro. Um, did Gamal del Toro have a quote on this one? Uh, yeah, that was Gamal del Toro's quote. And it, and it has, like, the um, the vibe a little bit of, like, Pan's Labyrinth a little bit. Um, and Devil's Backbone, kind of, in, in this one. And it, this also has a quote on here from Stephen King, and for Stephen King quote from uh, Neil Gaiman on here. Uh, but basically, though, to explain this movie, it's about, like... Um, these kids that are living out in the streets and they're kind of like um, these younger kids and they're kind of like doing, they're like stealing things and stealing things for money and like selling things. And it's kind of, and they're kind of like, uh, the, can they live in this area kind of, um, this kind of almost like a fort kind of thing that they made on the top of this building. It's almost like the Lost Boys in Peter, Peter Pan. It almost has that kind of vibe. Uh, but this is like a dark fairy tale but set in the real world essentially, but not exactly fairy tale. Like I said, it's hard to explain, but it's about this, this girl, though, being in the movie, though, um, she, like, uh, you know, witnesses this this body that was dead on the ground uh, because of the shooting that she heard outside when she was in school. She heard this, and then she witnesses this body, and kind of, like, you saw, like, the blood almost, like, follow her, and it was kind of like, when she witnessed this, it was almost like bad came after her in a weird way. And then it was kind of like, from there, uh, she ended up, you know, um, her mother, and this is all in the beginning of the movie, her mother goes missing, and it's like, there's about a group of these kind of bad people are living in the in the you know a gang of these bad guys that are kind of killing people and they're like kidnapping women and all sorts of horrible things are going on and basically though the girl thinks that her mother was kidnapped by this group and it's kind of her she ends up going and like living with those kids on the street that she met and kind of the whole thing of what's going on with them like I said it's very hard to explain but a really 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 well made movie on here though this has the making of Tigers Are Not Afraid it has the inter interview on here with Gamero Del Toro uh, director's commentary track on here, deleted scenes, uh, casting sessions, as well as photo galleries. It also has on here the you know the, the original Spanish language audio track, as well as a version dubbed in English as well on this one. And the next ones I got here are both from Blue Underground, and these are some really cool brand new 4K releases here. These ones are available for the first time ever on 4K, and it's uh, Lucio Fulci's Zombie and William Lustig's uh, Maniac. Now, if you guys have never seen Maniac, this is a really, really super intense film. Uh, it's basically, though, it stars, you know, um, Joe Spinell, and Joe Spinell was in like a whole bunch of different movies. Uh, one that I always really like was called Undertaker. Uh, which, uh, uh, Vinegar Syndrome released that one a couple of years back. He's also in a movie which was similar to this film when he I can't always forget the name of it but it was basically with him going to the Cannes Film Festival and he's like obsessed with this one actress there and it's like he's like stalking her and all that kind of stuff but it has a similar kind of vibe to Maniac but Maniac though is basically though about William Lustig's character who's this real like mean spirited like upset mean guy and he's basically like kind of cracking up and talking to himself all kind of weird stuff's going on with him but he's basically going out at night and killing women and like I said it is a really really brutal brutal film but performance from Joe Spinelli though is what really makes this movie he did such an amazing job in this movie it's kind of online with something with like um, Henry Porter of a serial killer like kind of has like that sort of kind of vibe to this one a little bit uh, but on here though uh, keep in mind though it, it, uh, it, it only includes the 4k version of the film it doesn't include the film on blu-ray so it only has
has the 4K of the film, but the special features though, they are on a Blu-ray disc. So on here though, it has um, on the um, 4K disc, it has um, two different commentary tracks in here with the director. Uh, one of them is with Tom Savini as well as the director. Uh, theatrical trailers on here, TV spots, and on disc two it has, which is a Blu-ray disc of, the, of just the features, and that has um, Maniac outtakes, Return to the Scene of the Crime with William Lustig, a bunch of different featurettes on here with the, you know interviews. It has um, the Joe Spinell story, uh, Mr. Robbie, Maniac 2, promo reel, Maniac publicity, so lots of stuff on here. Now, though, 4K-wise, though, uh, the transfer on here is great. Uh, you know, Blue Underground did a great job cleaning up this film. This is one of those movies, too, if you guys have never seen this one before, you know, and you guys have 4K capacities, would definitely recommend seeing it for the first time ever on 4K. And on here, though, it's, you know, the 4K is from the original 60mm camera negative. It also has um, Dolby Vision HDR, as well as Dolby Atmos uh, audio mix on this one as well. But like I said, picture quality on this one looks great. It's a very dark, brutal film, and the HDR really benefits this film, like I said, since it's a very dark film. And also, it's much, it's brightened up as well with the, um, 4K always just boosts the color as well. But uh, when it comes to zombie, though, Lucio Fulci's zombie, this is a great zombie film. Now, this movie, though, uh, has had a lot of different titles because, like, in, um, like, Italy and stuff like that, uh, Dawn of the Dead was called Zombie. So some people would know this film as Zombie 2 because it was called Zombie 2 in Italy. I think, in, I don't know if it was all of Europe, but I know Italy. But, like, so if, if you guys are think, like, oh, uh, is this the same, as Zombie 2 something else? No, there was never, Zombie 2 is just the same as Zombie. Zombie Zombie is called Zombie 2 as well. It's also sometimes called Zombie without the E as well. I've seen releases with that way as well. But this is basically though this one woman whose father is on this island and he's kind of doing like experiments, these weird sort of experiments there. And like the one boat in the beginning of the movie that the, the his, that her father like sent back to New York from his island, like um, it was like ended up being like the people on the boat had died and the cops are on there and they discover a zombies on there and all sorts of weird st stuff was going on on this boat. And basically though, this news reporter, he's kind of sent to cover the, the weirdness around this boat and what had happened on there. And he has a, and coming across the one's daughter there who's on from the island. And, you know, she's trying to find her father and hasn't heard from him in months. And basically they go and charter a boat and go the whole way to get to this island. And when they get there, of course, it's a the island is infested with zombies. But it is a... And, a great zombie movie. If you guys have never seen this movie, uh, you know, it's one like an absolute must watch. And it's one of the zombie ones you don't hear about it as much as like, of course, like Dawn of the Dead and stuff like that. But it is a great film. Now on here, this one has on there feature wise on the 4K disc, it has a commentary track on here, two different commentary tracks, a theatrical trailers, radio spots, poster gallery. It has an intro on here by Gamilo Del Toro, it has an intro to the film. On disc two, it has on here um, some interviews on here with, with some of the stars. As an interview on here with the co-producer, interview on here with the writer, as an interview with the makeup artist on this one, as well as a zombie lover and award-winning filmmaker Gamero Del Torres talks about one of his favorite films on this one. But 4K-wise, though, this looks amazing. This is definitely the best this film has ever looked. And this one also has, it's taken from the um, 35mm negative in 4K. And this one has Dolby Vision HDR as well as Dolby Atmos audio mix on this one. But uh, it is like, especially too when they get to the island, uh, the, you know, the 4K looks great on the island because it really, like I said, boosts the colors and everything. But definitely, definitely, um, you know, if you guys have 4K, would definitely recommend both of these ones, you know, for uh, upgrading to 4K. And the next one I got here is from Dark Sky Films. It's a movie here called In the Trap. This is actually a really interesting, really creepy film. It's basically, though, it starts off in the beginning of the movie about this kid, and, like, he, like, ends up in his room. He sees, like, this kind of, um sort of like a spirit kind of thing some kind of something uh, that's like totally terrorizing this kid and he's like telling you know he screams for his mother his mother comes in and, and saying oh yeah well yeah, it's okay uh, it's your imagination and then she gives him this cross and says you know hold this cross and if anything ever comes it scares you just you know hold this and it will help you know keep you safe and you'll be safe with this and everything and then right afterwards though right when she leaves this thing is back in the room again and then it's like under the sheets and it's like coming after the kid but basically what ends up happening, this is very in the very beginning of the movie, whatever this thing is, this entity ends up killing the sister. And then it ends up cutting to like after this. And it's kind of like um 
this kid has been haunted by this his entire life and you know it's something that he's never gotten over and his mother uh, this like I said it takes place a number of years later and the kid now is you know older and you know his mother had just passed away and he's now moving into uh, an apartment it's basically though um, he ends up finding like his this girlfriend that he this girl that he really likes and he's like talking to the priest you know who's basically the priest who's kind of like helped him ever, ever since he was a kid after what had happened to the sister and kind of like um, um, it was kind of like t kind of taking care of the family and everything and like he's like saying oh well this if this is the girl you know you should uh you know you know be open to happiness and all this kind of stuff and of course though uh right when the, the mother's stuff from her house kind of comes in the house uh the girlfriend though something ends up happening to her and she starts sort of acting strange and it's sort of like was this entity that was in the house before you know that had ha you know had killed the sister and kind of haunted the family and everything is this entity now back so that's basically what it is. It's kind of like about like this now is sort of coming back around again. And it's now it's like I said, it's it's happening to the girlfriend. It's kind of all of what's going on. And the priest is coming in to try and figure out what how to stop what's happening here. But like I said, this is a very creepy movie. And it even says on here uh, that has has um, displays the same polish as that of you know films of the you know 70s and 80s. And it, it definitely has that kind of vibe, like a 70s and 80s you know possession film here. But I really like I said, really like this one a lot here. And like I said, this one here is called. Uh, in the Trap. The next ones here are from Gravitas Ventures. This is a movie here called uh, Lost Transmission, which stars uh, Simon Pegg, Juno Temple, and Alexander Dediadro. And this is basically, though, about, um, uh, you know, um, Simon uh, Pegg's character, who is like this music producer, and he, you know, he's kind of has a sort of a relationship with uh, Juno Temple's character, and um, you know, she really wants to do music, and he, you know, hears her voice, and he's like, oh, I, you know, I really feel like I could make, you know, you know, a really cool album with you, and I want you to go in the booth, and and she's kind of really nervous about the whole thing, and and you know, she ends up going in, and he puts together like this track with her voice, and it's like, kind of like a synth kind of music, like almost like um, the band Churches or Grimes and that kind of stuff. That's kind of like the kind of music that you know he's helping to put together and uh, she takes her music though to the this music producer this other group and uh, they really like the stuff and like the music that she's written because she's writing all these songs uh, with Simon Pegg's character and Alexander Dediatro's character is like this pop star and uh, Juno Temple you know will be like right you know uh, got this job to write for her but basically right when all this is happening to begin the movie things are going really well something's going on with Simon Pegg's character and uh, he's starting to act very distant and really weird and you find out this is all in the beginning that he has a you know um, a schizophrenia and he and it's basically become really getting really bad and this movie is dealing a lot with mental illness and about what's going on with him and about Juno Temple's character trying to figure out exactly how to you know help Simon Pegg and and because like I said it's it's progressively getting worse and worse and worse and it's just, it's been something that was able to be controlled but all of a sudden it's getting really really bad but this is a really really well done uh, character piece of uh, film here and the other one here here. I can't really show the cover for this one because it's kind of gross uh, just so, so no one says anything about it so I'll just cover it up like this here and then I'll show you guys the back but it's a movie here called uh, Ak Ak Akima, Akima Hot uh, Motel I'm not exactly sure how you say it how the exact title is but the cover is like a body on the front it's like a little like I said it's a little gross a little gory so just so no one says anything about it but like I said this movie is called Akim Akim Akia uh, Motel hopefully I'm saying that right I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it 100% correct but it's basically though this is a really interesting pretty creepy movie it's about like um, and it's kind of hard to explain it's sort of set in like a different kind of world uh, where it's like um, stuff to do with like people coming into a country without permission or something, uh, and but it's basically though about this father and his son, his adopted. Son, I think it's his. I don't. I'm sure if it's his adopted son, I believe. And um, basically though, he is like has this weird like motel that's out kind of out in the middle of nowhere, and it's a real clinical, weird looking place. It kind of looks like something out of Ex Machina a little bit, and mixed with like this like underground bunker kind of thing. It has an amazing look, like the the set design work of this place was amazing but basically though people kind of come in there that are like immigrants or kind of like hiding out and need a place to stay and and basically though it's sort of like the movie uh, deathbed the bed that eats and like the, they go into this room and they end up getting like eaten by this kind of creature and the father is showing his son this and kind of having wants his son to kind of take over what they're doing here and it's like they work with the government and all sorts of things going on in here it's one of those things when you find out more and more about this as it goes along but it's a really interesting 
like and it has like vibes like i said of like um with the look of it of like ex machina which was like the deathbed the bed that eats and all those kind of things combined into get together also with like a you know um H.P. Lovecraft kind of vibe a little bit. But like I said, it was a very, very interesting movie here. Like I said, I believe it's called Akama, uh, Akama Motel here. I, I, like I said, I'm not 100% sure how to say it, but like I said, a really interesting one here. The next one here is from ITN uh, Distribution. This is a movie here called uh, Scarecrow's Revenge. This is one I was really interested in seeing because I've... Um, you know, Scott Jeffrey, who was the producer of the film, I've shot um, scenes and stuff like that for some of his films. And I actually shot something for um, one of his other Scarecrow films. So I was really looking forward to seeing this one. And this is basically, uh, you know, set, was it set during the, um, I guess like the medieval kind of period of time? Uh, but it's like, it's interesting though, because it's like a, like a killer scarecrow during this period of time. And it's basically though, like a, like a guy's soul ends up like possessing this uh, scarecrow, a crow. And it's basically though, within this village, this scarecrow is kind of going around and like killing people in the village. And it's kind of like, they're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to stop this, you know, evil scarecrow that's going around killing people and stuff like that and like I said it's got like a like a medieval setting and everything to it like a Viking kind of period setting so it's kind of a, an interesting mix up to have like that with the scarecrow coming after them and stuff like that but I actually like this one uh, if you guys like you know killer scarecrow movies would definitely recommend you guys check this out here the next one here is from uh, moviezing.com I have a link below where you guys can order this one this is also from neon and Radical Media, and this is a documentary here called Spaceship Earth, and this is one that I was so ex you know interested in seeing and really excited to get to, to check out, because this is about basically the Biodome. If you guys know me, I, one of my, my movies that I absolutely love to watch is the Pauly Shore movie, uh, you know, uh, Biodome, and it's basically like this dome that people, you know, would go in for a year and live in there, and this, you know, this, the Biodome was actually a real thing, and this, I think it was called, what was the name of the thing? I don't know if it says on here what the name of the thing was. It was called the um, Biosphere 2 is what it was called. But this is a documentary, though, about the Biosphere 2. It was about a scientist who ended up going in there. Uh, was it for two years, I believe, they went in there for? I believe it was two years. Yeah, two years in quarantine. They basically, you know, lived in there and kind of grew food and kind of survived in this dome thing. And, you know, it's basically what inspired the Biodome movie. But this is a documentary, though, all about ho the whole thing and about the group of people who put this together and kind of how that they um, had done all kind of other stuff. They kind of lived on a commune kind of community uh, before, you know, in this like the 60s and 70s. And they kind of built a boat at one point. And, and like and it was all these things that they did, it was a really interesting documentary. And has great like footage inside of the biodome type thing when they're in there and kind of what they were going through and everything. This is, like I said, is a really, really interesting documentary. And if you're fans of the movie Biodome, like I said, it was really cool to see this kind of like what inspired that movie and like the real actually biodome type spear thing that people were in and what they, you know, did and everything. But really, really interesting documentary here. Next one here, uh, this one is from Second Sight, uh, from, uh, you know, Second Sight uh, Films. Now, this one, keep in mind, this is region B locked, so you guys have to have an all region, you know, region free Blu-ray player to play this one, or, of course, or have a region B player. And this is a movie, it's, I saw this one um, a couple years back, and, and to watch this one again, too, and this is a great film. It's a movie here called Revenge, and this is... um. It's basically though about this guy who's like this real rich guy, and he has this girlfriend, and he like he and she's he's kind of like in his um kind of out in the desert in the middle of nowhere in this like really expensive house. And essentially, though, it's about like, um, you know, kind of like these friends are out there for hunting and stuff like that. And it's basically like a surviving the game kind of like, um, you know, like the movie The Hunt kind of situation where they're there to hunt this girl. And it's basically, though, um, they're, you know, coming after her and she's kind of trying to survive. And it's like she's not going to accept this. She's not going to accept getting taken down by these guys. So she's basically trying to, you know, take them out and trying to survive. And it's like becomes this absolute absolutely brutal intense movie but it is so well shot uh, most of the film is in French uh, but it's like one of those things where it wasn't hard to follow or anything like that because some movies if they're subtitled sometimes it can be hard to get into it or you know what I mean it's not always but sometimes but this one is not at all like that yeah a great movie but like and really really well shot but super gory one of like the top goriest movies I've seen in a really long time it has on here though um a feature wise it has a brand new interview on here with the director and then actor Matilda Lutz, as well as an interview on here with actor uh, Gualman uh, uh, Bochad, uh, an interview on here with the cinematographer. 
Uh, Death Notes, an interview on here with the composer of this one, uh, whose name, the, the composer's name is Rob. Yeah, he's, he's done music in a couple different movies. Uh, brand new commentary track on here with Kat, uh, Kat Ellinger, author and editor of Diabolic. And also on here, limited edition context, it has a rigid slipcase featuring new artwork, as well as a poster with new artwork, as well as a soft cover book. But it's a really, like I said, it's a real hardbound uh, case. I'll show you guys inside. Here's a look, though, at the Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray is in this um, black case here. And then it also has the poster in here, and it's the poster, the artwork that's on the front of the um, Blu-ray, as well as, like I said, it has the... Um, you know, the booklet as well, which has stuff, you know, pictures from the film, you know, so about the production and everything. But like I said, this is an absolute must watch movie. Really, really like this one uh, a lot here. And the last one here is one I want to let you guys know is available. And I'll put a link below to the website. Uh, this one, I didn't know this one was coming. I believe I reviewed the director's um, other film here, Baron Von Lugi Lugos, Halloween Spookathon. I believe I remember reviewing that one a uh, year or two back, I believe. But this one is the new one here called Sharp Candy. And this is called Tales of Horror. And this is basically, though, an anthology. But it's not like an anthology film. Like, it's basically, like, almost, I think it was like a series, like a TV series. Because it's... Um, it was like um, 20 minute long, uh, you know, at, uh, short films, short horror films on here. And it was like a bunch of different ones. Like, uh, for example, it has on here, Girls Terrorized by a Supernatural Force. A Lonely Paul Paul, uh, Pawn Broker Witnesses a Horrible Crime. A Brother and Sister Get Lost on the Way to a Halloween Party and End Up in Hell. Uh, trick or Treat uh, Treaters Take a Trick uh, Way Too Far. These are the horrifying and bizarre stories told in the first season of the new horror anthology series. So like I said, it's a horror anthology series. But it has on here four different uh, shorts on this one. But and it also has on here, though, uh, a blooper reel as well as trailers on this one. Like I said, one of you guys on this one's available here uh, on DVD. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.